Nah. What the hell's this? Melvin and the Squirrels, part of the rodent invasion of the early 60s. Got a feather in his cap and called it rice -aroni. Melvin! Children! Children, please! Nothing too wild! Huh? Wild? You'd have to try pretty hard to find an animated franchise that means more to me than Alvin and the Chipmunks. Oh, well, I, I, I mean, yeah, you're not wrong, but like, okay, okay, you're right, you got it, I, you got it, I see your point. Okay, man, I, bitch! Pretty much 20 years ago, Universal Studios had the rights to the Chipmunks and ended up doing two separate direct-to-DVD movies based on the characters, combining them with well-known Universal monsters. These being 1999's Alvin and the Chipmunks Meet Frankenstein and 2000's Alvin and the Chipmunks Meet the Wolfman. I was definitely outside for both of these, more so Wolfman. I remember that being the first one I saw, running that VHS on repeat like a psychopath. If anyone watching this is too young to know what a VHS is, it's that filter that y'all keep slapping over footage of Homer Simpson driving high off medical marijuana for the sad man vibes. I'm sad, I know ya. Neck ass. Keep it a buck, I've been looking for an excuse to talk about the chipmunks for a while on this channel. And these specials are definitely a great way to start. The chipmunks low-key had the streets. It's time to show them the love that they deserve in the spirit of the Halloween season. You feel me? So fuck who getting the best head. I'm trying to see who's suffering the most, know what I mean? You feel me? It's spook day, you little bitch. Your horse. Beats. Oh, uh, beats. <laughs> All right, let's go. Probably make a little 20 minute video like I always do. Put it out a little before Halloween. I got a couple of days. Yo, my man, my man, my man. Chill, 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 yo, chill, 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 my man, chill, my man, chill, chill, yo, chill, yo, chill, 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 my man. Chipmunks, Universal, Halloween, let's do it. Hurry up. <laughs> See, watching this kind of stuff as an adult is cool because I get to talk about different aspects that I couldn't quite put my finger on when I was a kid. I knew something was off, but both of these films are actually way different in tone from each other. Alvin and the Chipmunks meets Frankenstein takes place in the theme park most of the time with the Chipmunks' borderline celebrities performing and shit, rubbing elbows with big movie stars like Arnold Schwartz, a black man. We don't say the N-word in this house, sorry. After performing one day, the chipmunks decide to go off and end up getting lost and locked in unknowingly, which I... Y'all ever been to y'all theme park before? Universal, y'all be throwing niggas out faster than Chris Brown died and stomped the yard. We did it! We got there! Throughout the early portions of this film, we see Dr. Frankenstein, who spells his name like this, apparently. <laughs> Nigga was ahead of his time, had a too cool Heiko Montana on the end of that and you got yourself a whole MySpace IMVU username. He gets hired to work at the theme park to sort of put on this evil scientist act for an attraction. Uh, but <laughs> the gag is, he's actually a scientist. I, I didn't say the gag was funny. He actually ends up creating Frankenstein's monster and the boys walking on him doing this. So like he tells Frankenstein to chase them around the theme park because no snitching and they end up running home to which he follows apparently he came to give theodore his teddy bear back that he dropped while he was running from him and they boys now i guess then the movie takes this weird break where the boys teach frankie how to act if he wants to have friends yes his name's frankie now keep up the boys have to be to a movie premiere the doctor snatches alvin he gives him like this weird potion that turns him into a stereotypical cartoon character this this is very offensive roger rabbit should tell hr about this I don't know, Alvin bugs out at the premiere until Simon and Theodore give him the antidote. Everybody peeps Frankie, they try to get him out of here. Theodore stands up for him. No, he's my friend! He's no monster, Gaston. You are. Oh, snap. And yeah, that's pretty much it. There's definitely a lot to like here. This one's guilty of having one of my favorite gags in animation history, where they're going so fast on a roller coaster that they actually turn into all their past designs. This blew my damn mind as a kid, and I still think it's crazy clever. Man, he's like cough syrup. He just won't go down. Alvin, what you know about that lean, boy? I also really like all of the stuff in the beginning where the chipmunks are kind of just like messing around. You never really get to see Simon join in on a lot of Alvin's fun, so it's actually pretty cool when you get to see them all playing around together as a unit. And it's really cool to see Ms. Miller again, even if it is just for a few moments. This isn't even her best performance though. That goes to the chipmunk adventure. 
I don't know, it's a little harder for me to write about this special beyond this. There's not really much else to say. Anything else I have to say about it kind of just comes from when comparing it to the second one that they did, which I, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna talk about. Like, don't worry, they're both in the thumbnail, my guy. Stop asking me the name of these songs. I write them on the screen. Alvin and the Chipmunks meet the Wolfman. This is the one I really wanted to talk about. Really into monsters and stuff, Alvin suspects something's up with their new neighbor, Mr. Talbot. At the same time, their school is putting on a production of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with Simon as the doctor and Alvin as the Mr. Uh, I don't know, that's what I wrote. Theodore is getting picked on at school. Alvin like blows the fucking school up, mixing chemicals and shit. That looks like it's coming from the school. They cast Theodore in Alvin's role thinking it'll help instill some confidence in him, but he's having a pretty hard time finding said confidence. On his way home one day, he gets bitten by a dog and slowly starts to change, not only in appearance, but attitude too. This nigga turns into a little shit. Theodore was always the sweet one. What about me? You're the smart one. And me? You're the other one. Blah. Delete. Alvin and Simon realize that he's actually a werewolf. I mean, sorta, of, he's like a puppy. So they try to figure out the best way to help him. Out of the two, this is definitely the one that feels more like not just a film, but a Halloween film. It might be the colors and shading, definitely, but I feel like Wolfman really shines in his characters, music, and storytelling. A lot more of the cast is used here. We get Brittany, Eleanor, and Jeanette, who are always great to see, and Dave gets a lot more to do too. I love whenever Dave, Alvin, Simon, and Theodore are treated like a loving family. Like, watch this clip of Theodore getting bullied. This is like such a fatherly reaction. Like, I think about this like so often. Dave was always kind of a pussy, I guess. But seeing him guard his boys so he can beat Mr. Talbot the fuck up is great. Yeah, okay, so turns out Alvin was right and their neighbor was actually the werewolf that bit Theodore. Then they catch a fade at the school play and Theodore bites him back, reversing the whole thing and they're both cured. <gasps> I'm sorry. It doesn't entirely make sense, but Simon explained it and he wears glasses, so I am inclined to believe him. Anyone that knows anything about these specials knows that this one is definitely the superior one in terms of the soundtrack. It's some heat up here. Monster out in you, everything's gonna be alright, monks on a mission, everyday struggle, machine gun funk, fuck me, interlude. Oh shit, this is the track list to Ready or Die. Everyday Struggle is my favorite Biggie song. Theodore kind of shines a lot in both of these, especially in Wolfman. Frankenstein is more of a collective adventure, but even then he sort of just like takes the charge when all of the friendship stuff comes into play. I feel like they understood that his character is relatively sweeter, making it a little easier to give films a little bit more heart. Simon kind of does the least in both of these, which is kind of upsetting. I mean, like he was always my favorite. I had to do that describe yourself in three characters thing on Twitter, and I realized that I deliver all my videos like a black Simon. and. I've never been the same since. It was always kind of weird to me that the chipmunks were treated like celebrities in one of these and normal kids in the other. They used to do that shit a lot in the 80s cartoon. I remember there was an episode where Dave's like struggling to pay the bills and I always got confused by that. They're like pop stars. I thought they were rich. And it just dawned on me that the chipmunks might not own their masters. Ouch. Who they signed to? Tommy Boy? Yo, I'll be feeding y'all the most deep cut jokes in these videos and i'll be so surprised when y'all get them i don't know man i just prefer wolfman in literally all regards especially in tone and pacing frankenstein has a lot more walking around aimlessly and talking than i remember all the stuff about frankie actually being a good guy doesn't actually come in until well after the halfway point before that, it's so lackadaisical it's almost like nothing happens then it gets to the friendship stuff and it's like i this this doesn't even feel like a Halloween joint anymore. Like, listen to this record they played during the montage. Ooh. 
like jesus christ jesus is king it almost feels like this special has like an identity crisis i don't even know what it's trying to be see now wolfman's tone and pacing is wild consistent making the school put on a production of jacqueline hyde is dope because it keeps this like spooky tone following us wherever we are in the story see making this a story about theodore's confidence is really smart because it ties right into his behavior as a werewolf he's really like brass and cocky when that happens which you could maybe call confidence but it's not it's like arrogance patched over wild insecurities the one true act of confidence that theodore shows when he's completely normal is when he runs to eleanor's house to give her a necklace that's why it's so poignant when he recognizes it in the climax and he starts to protect her all of these rude wild actions those aren't him but protecting eleanor protecting his one true call to confidence that's him oh, oh shit wait i don't i don't think he remembers any of that never mind <laughs> One of my closest homeboys back home is hip-hop dancer eSkills on Instagram. It was from him that I first heard the phrase musicality, which is sort of like listening to music and catching every beat in motion. They usually use this as a term in dance. I always wanted to talk about this in terms of animated stuff. It's honestly my favorite part of a lot of scenes in the medium, not even just this film. I just never really knew the right way to describe and word how I felt. But, you know, the cool thing about this channel is that I get to talk about things that normally wouldn't come up in conversation. Hey man, how's it going? Did you know that the voice of George Jetson died in a recording booth? This is the last skit I'm animating. I have two days to make this video. I'm gonna try to describe this the best way I can. Let's look at like the monster out in you sequence. The entire thing is on beat and it's great. <laughs> It looks pretty standard. You probably think I'm like talking about the snap, but look at Theodore's arms right here. Oh, brother, brother. He's like stepping on every syllable. Then Alvin stops him. What's gotten into you? Puts his hand on his hips lately. Boom, snap. Then Simon Shrug here. That's a really great touch. Nothing in the world that you can't do. Or Alvin and Simon popping up right here. See, peep how they pop up on in you. See, this next shot I think is pretty cool because it starts off going to the rhythm of the lyrics, but ends on following the instrumentation. Same thing with the arms. How do you do? Turn. What's up with you? Then there's these symbols that you can hear in the back of the instrumentation. Theodore actually lands on that when he strikes his last pose. See, so like now when you play the whole thing out, it's harmonized so great. I love it. Stuff like this is littered throughout Wolfman, and I eat this type of shit up. The timing is great. Monk's on a mission, an earlier song, has a few great timing bits too. We'll keep on working. I could go on for hours about this shit. I've always been the biggest fan of timing anything, animation or film, to music perfectly. Or, you know, like them bitch ass film art tour niggas call it, Mickey Mousing. God damn, just say y'all don't got rhythm already. I don't got time for semantics. Now. Since we're on timing, I might as well just round it off here. The animation in both of these films is great, but both in their own way. Wolfman has all of the better timing and slicker models. The shadows are a great touch and is storyboarded really well, leading to a lot of great looking compositions. The animation is pretty bouncy, but sometimes it's a little like too bouncy. You're retiring? Why, you don't look a day over 50. I'm 31! Jesus Christ, Shorty squished faster than Chris Brown died and stomped the yard. I'm making up for lost time, damn it. Frankenstein has much rounder designs. As you can tell from the credits, these are both done by the same teams, but you can tell that this is their first time working with these characters. The animation is a lot more straightforward than Wolfman. There isn't much bounce to it. Sometimes it just kind of looks like a cleaned up episode of the 80s cartoon, but it has that gag I really like. There's a lot more gravity to this movement, and the coloring really helps you land right into that overly priced theme park mindset. I like Dave in both of these. His least favorite design of mine might just be from the 80s cartoon just because there's like so much detail in his face that's just like not animated well then there's like the chipmunk adventure where he looks like bob saget there's a lot going on they simplified his design here and it feels a lot better 
They simplified Britney and shit too, who had these like stockings and stuff going on with her in the 80s cartoon. It was a little jarring at first, but I see the vision. Not only is it a lot less complicated to animate, but no one really dressed like this around this time period, unless you're talking about like Pepper Ann. Yo, going to an ad break after the Pepper Ann intro is sick. These specials are still as fun to watch as I remember them being. I definitely recommend checking both of them out. They both hold up pretty well, despite Wolfman being the superior one in my eyes. It's kind of hard to detach the chipmunks today from those city live action movies, and that Nickelodeon cartoon that's airing today is doing a pretty good job at holding the fort down for the franchise. It's just like the 80s cartoon. But these two deserve way more attention. They may not be as spooky as something that you'd anticipate for this season, but it's always great to see Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. And Dave too, don't forget about Dave, you guys. condition. If we prove he's not a werewolf, you give up this whole monster craziness. Hmm. Deal. What did the doctor give you to drink? Theodore, Theodore, Theodore! What do I have to do to get some attention around here? Gross thing! Theodore took care of it. Theodore beat up a werewolf? Theodore! Simon! Oh! For it is the face of evil. Sorry, we're not cultured on mediocre white white theme songs, but uh, bitch. <laughs> 